All right, let's talk more now about this pivotal election with former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, Edward Jerizian. He's also the director of the Baker Institute for Public Policy at Rice University. A pleasure to have you on. Uh, first off, I mean, pleasure what do you make of what's you. happening now? I mean, I was just saying, it's like deja vu all over again, a very tight race, neck and neck. Uh, your take. Well, you've got it actually right. It's too close to call. And uh, as your correspondents have said, uh, Israeli exit polls are notoriously proven to be inaccurate in the past. But there's a certain dynamic at play here. Uh, there's a strong chance that uh, Bibi Netanyahu will not get the majority he needs to form a coalition government. Uh, if that happens, we'll have to see what the, uh, uh, the political bargaining is going to be after the uh, results are in. But I think, I think the stakes in this election in Israel are, are very high and almost uh, strategic, uh, both in terms of Israeli uh, domestic politics and the nature of Israeli democracy and in terms of Israel's foreign policy, especially uh, in terms of its immediate Arab neighbors and the Israeli-Palestinian situation. So this is a very consequential uh, election uh, that... Uh, uh, a lot, a lot is 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 uh, banking yeah. on who wins. Let's talk more about that because you know, if Netanyahu does not have enough votes to form a coalition government, what would this mean for the future of Israel itself in terms of its identity? I mean, because uh, there was a lot of talk over during the election uh, regarding Israel's future and whether it should be a secular state versus religious. It's a very good point, and that that's one of the critical issues at play here. The role of the national religious parties and the ultra-orthodox uh, has been very uh, important and influential under Bibi Netanyahu because he staked his, his uh, uh, prime ministership on, on their support and uh, therefore they had been granted a great deal of uh, influence and power under his prime ministership. Uh, you mentioned Lieberman, uh, his basic thrust, he, he is the great disruptor. Uh, in this election and uh, also in a way uh, one of the kingmakers because he's a secularist he's right-wing but he's a secularist and he is hell-bent on breaking the power of the national religious parties so this is a very important dynamic in Israeli domestic politics and and the polity itself and if what would against coalition look like and what kind of impact would that have on the Palestinians? Well, that's a good question. The, if, if Gantz can create a unity government and he can bring in uh, various uh, factions in the Israeli body politic uh, that will work toward a uh, settlement with the Palestinians, this would be a shift, an important shift toward the possibility, and I, I want to be very careful on this, the possibility of uh, negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. Right now, the Israeli-Palestinian situation is totally stalemated. Uh, this whole continuation of no agreement between Israel and, and the Palestinians, uh, to me, is a, a, a very uh, strong liability uh, in, the, in Israel and Palestine and the region itself. Uh, everyone and Netanyahu has always been f focusing on the Iranian threat, which is obviously very real, but the equal threat, to say the least, is the, non, uh, the, the lack of an agreement between Israel and Palestine. It okay. addresses some of the existential questions of what Israel is going to be. If Israel wants okay. to be a democratic Jewish state, it should, in my eyes, and this is my bias, should work toward a two-state solution where there's a clear separation territorially and with security arrangements and everything involved in an Israeli-Palestinian statement. It should be a two-state solution. Mm -hmm. Everything else would be sort of a one-state solution, either a binational state, which uh, would really work against the Zionist purpose because the Palestinians are equally numerous uh, between the Jordan and uh, the Mediterranean than the uh, Israeli Jews. Uh, therefore, the demographic rate of growth of the Palestinians would be greater, and would Israel in the future lose its Jewish majority? So you can see there's a great deal at stake in what happens. Mm. To answer your question on Gantz, 
if he can put together a coalition that works though to peace, I have uh, a reservation here. Gantz is, he's conservative. Uh, right. He's a former chief of staff. He's a hardliner. He's talked about Israel should maintain uh, its presence in the Jordan Valley. So I'm not being euphoric about this. I'm being realistic. Uh, it'll be tough to engage a Israeli-Palestinian negotiating track, even if Gantz wins. But I think the possibility of working toward a settlement would be enhanced if uh, he does so. Uh, very interesting. Ambassador Edward Jerusian, I appreciate you joining us, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure.